Coming up on today's Michigan Football Report, we're going to talk about another police investigation involving the Michigan football program. Then, how about some QB coach search, right? We gave you some names last week, going to update you on a few of them, tell you who's potentially in, who is uh, maybe expressed to Jim Harbaugh that they are not interested in this role. And tonight, Jim Harbaugh, Sharon Moore, and others have a big-time in-home visit with Nicholas Harbour. We're going to talk some winter conditioning is all, and maybe we'll talk about my favorite cliches as winter conditioning got underway on Monday. Then, NCA investigation. You may have seen late in the week last week that Michigan's maybe not complying with what the NCA wants. I'm going to kind of give you my take on what's going on there. So that's the today's show. Before we dive into it, though, I do want to know if you're a subscriber. Uh, if you are, go ahead and down and stare in the comments and comment me. And if you're not a subscriber, what are you waiting for? YouTube.com slash Michigan TV. You can always come back to the show. But while you're here, just click that subscribe button right below the video as we approach 26,000 subscribers. We've got all those stories coming up in the Michigan Football Report by Chat Sports right now. I am your host, James Yoder. You are watching the Michigan Football Report here on a Tuesday. Folks, we are eight days away from National Signing Day Part 2. It's coming up next Wednesday on February 1st. But tomorrow, one Wednesday prior, we're doing another live show, 5 o'clock Eastern. So make sure you join us here on YouTube. Subscribe, set yourself a reminder, put it in your phone, tell Siri, whatever you got to do to remind yourself, 5 o'clock Eastern tomorrow on Wednesday, the Michigan Football Report weekly live show. We're going to do one this Wednesday, then again next Wednesday. After that, it's going to kind of kind of depend on what the storylines are and uh, the appetite you guys have for a weekly live show. All right, police investigation. Nothing really bad pertaining to the program or anything like the Matt Weiss situation, but Blake Corum, uh, his car got stolen in the past uh, day or two, so... Um, this is a Camaro that is uh, wrapped in um, camouflage, uh, kind of like the military snow level camouflage, was stolen out of a parking garage in Ann Arbor. Now, these guys on three, the Wolverine.com, you've probably heard them before. They're saying, oh, God, well, you know, Blake Corum's prize, his prize, name, image, likeness, funded Camaro was stolen. Details on how you can help with your tip. So I'm sure they just put in their story uh, just the Ann Arbor Police Department phone number. Okay, cool. I think everyone knows that. But. Were they jumping ahead of themselves? Blake Corum quote tweeted that and said, wasn't name image likeness funded, okay? My parents used their hard-earned money to bless me with something nice after I graduated high school. God bless whoever stole it. Guys, if you guys go look, you know, these are just put out this afternoon here. Go to Blake Corum. It's, you know, at Blake underscore Corum and see the, t the tweet that he quoted. I'll put it down in the comments in the description too, a link to that tweet. Um, Pretty interesting. Uh, people are really taking it to the Wolverine uh, for the second January in a row uh, after they whiffed on the Harbaugh Minnesota Vikings stuff this year about like, well, why do you think Blake Corm's family couldn't afford the, cor the, the, the Corvette or the Camaro? Uh, I'm not sure. So the Wolverine, according to Blake Corm and the people who follow him on Twitter, you guys are canceled because people are really up in arms with the fact that they said it was name, image, likeness funded. Why couldn't Blake Corum himself, his family, whoever? Um, but I think it's probably a little bit, uh, you know, to uh, people overreacting a little bit. But speaking of cars, what kind of car do you guys drive? I take pride. A uh, little family tradition. My grandpa, you know, he's told me to, uh, you know, the worst investment you can make is a new car. And so I've been riding my car. It's almost 15 years old. Uh, 2008 car. And it still runs well. Now, my wife's got a new car every few years, whatever. But the car I drive every day, 2,008, 160,000 miles on it. So are you guys with me? Ride that bad boy to the ground? Or are you, you know, swapping out for an $800 car payment? every couple years let me know what year car that you guys drive down in the comments little update on the michigan football ncaa probe some news came out end of last week and i don't have anything new on it i just want to make sure we haven't talked about it you guys know what's going on and, and kind of where things are shaking out right uh, i told you last week in the live show harbaugh is initially willing to agree to one to two game suspension we met with ncaa investigators end of last week but they want to admit that he's lying, that he lied when, when they first met with him uh, months back about the probe and whoever ratted out Michigan and you know what they apparently did with buying a cheeseburger and Zooming during COVID and all this different stuff. Um, Harbaugh's refusing to admit that he lied. And if the NCAA pursues that and wants an admission or saying, hey, if you don't admit that you lied, we're going to give you a harsher penalty. Expect Michigan to consider a, uh, a deep legal fight with the NCAA that could potentially blow this thing out I mean, kind of stretch it out not just weeks days or months but we've seen these things with other programs they could go potentially for years right kansas is uh 
Uh, Arizona's, you know, Kansas, Arizona, they both had uh, different sanctions. But, like, it's four, five, six years after the initial uh, NCAA investigation, they come out with the actual penalty. So Michigan was trying to um, you know, expedite it a little bit. But if the NCAA is trying to play hardball, trying to get Harbaugh to admit that he lied, he doesn't want to do that. Whether he lied or not, I'm not going to make that, uh, uh, you know, guess. But uh, that's kind of how things shaken out. So don't, um, unless the NCAA just says, okay, Jim, we're backing off there. One game suspension, cool, sign, sign here. If that doesn't happen, I think this can, can uh, be sit over Michigan's head for the next year, two years. Who knows how long it goes. All right, guys, in a moment, we are going to talk some Matt Weiss replacement options. I gave you four or five names last week. Got an update on one or two of them and have a new name to uh, kind of throw that into the ring of potential offensive coordinator coaches or potentially just a QB coach for Jim Harbaugh. But the Michigan Football Report is sponsored by Athletic Greens. Folks, I take AG1 on a daily basis and it truly has made a difference in my overall health and well-being. You can get comprehensive and convenient daily nutrition at athleticgreens.com slash chat sports. I started taking AG1 in the morning as part of my daily routine and it has become a habit that I truly look forward to. Not only does it provide comprehensive health benefits, it also helps me feel ready to take on the day. Whether I'm hitting the gym or just running errands, AG1 gives me the energy and focus I need to power through. In addition, AG1 is a great supplement for recovery, and it's a habit that I love to include before and after my workout. AG1 makes me feel like I am on the same level as Michigan football athletes that I look up to, uh, that I look up to, and it inspires me to be as great as them. Covering my nutritional basis for the day literally couldn't be easier, which is why I trust Athletic Greens. I just mix one small scoop of AG1 with water and drink it first thing in the morning. Done. I also like that it costs less than $3 a day. Pretty good if you ask me. It's a really effective daily habit with the highest quality source ingredients, win-win. If a comprehensive solution is what you need from your supplement routine, then Athletic Greens is giving you a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Go to athleticgreens.com slash chat sports. That's athleticgreens.com slash chat sports. Check it out. The link is down below in the comments and the description of today's video. That's athleticgreens.com slash chat sports. All right, so last week we told you about Kirk Campbell, who is a offensive analyst for Michigan and reportedly has been involved in the game planning throughout the week and even at some points uh, kind of give an insight into what the opponents might be doing on offense, but bringing a different perspective to uh, Michigan's coaching staff. He has been you know around different places, but most recently was the offensive coordinator for Old Dominion. So he is still probably the top candidate. Jim Harbaugh is kind of keeping him there that if uh, things don't work out with other potential candidates that Jim Harbaugh is uh, pursuing, then Kirk Campbell is being kept right uh, on ice there that uh, it's like, hey, we can go back to you. You are the guy. Now, there's been all kinds of rumors out there that maybe Michigan would hire uh, a defensive coach and move people around, maybe move uh, one coach from offense to defense. Maybe Jay Harbaugh is no longer the special teams coordinator. All these different potential ideas. But if everything else stays the same, I'm just kind of focusing on what Harbaugh could be looking for in a QB coach and potentially a co-OC. So if it goes in, you know, ends up being an internal hire or uh, Harbaugh swings and misses on some of these bigger names we're going to talk about here, I think Kirk Campbell could end up being your guy. But that's not the only candidate that Jim Harbaugh is pursuing. Brian Greasy is one I thought that Jim Harbaugh should and apparently did uh, reach out to and, uh, and you know, gauge interest for this role. Uh, he was an NFL player after leading Michigan to a national championship in 1997 and had been in broadcasting for the past decade plus, but this season took a stab at a coaching role. He's the quarterback's coach for the 49ers. I don't know about you guys, but is there a coach in all of football that maybe has done a better job given the circumstances than Brian Greasy his first year they lose their starting quarterback right in Trey Lance they lose the former starting quarterback who's now the backup quarterback in Jimmy Garoppolo and now have won seven straight games with a rookie quarterback Brock Purdy and in the NFC championship game for the second straight year this time with a rookie quarterback but apparently he told Harbaugh either directly or through back channels that he is not interested in taking a lateral role to college if Michigan maybe offered him the offensive coordinator role, solo offensive coordinator role, maybe, but we're sure more there. That's not in the cards. So don't expect Brian Greasy to be part of this search going forward for Michigan. New name that we didn't really talk about, though, is T. Martin. All right, you're familiar with T. Martin. Um, USC with Lane Kiffin, Kiffin, prior to that, Tennessee with Lane Kiffin. He has been around the way, and where is he now? All right with Tennessee way back in the day, 1998 national champions. Got it done where uh, you know Peyton Manning couldn't. 
Presentation with the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, surprise, surprise. Uh, Mike McDonald, Jesse Minter. Um, well, you got Matt Weiss, of course. But Michigan has raided the Ravens and kind of given another stepping stone for these coaches to get more experience, trusted guys from John Harbaugh bringing over to Michigan. T. Martin might be the new guy, right? They have let go of Greg Roman, their offensive coordinator. T. Martin is not being considered for their offensive coordinator role in Baltimore. And the word on the street is, unless they make an internal hire from one of their other assistants that are interviewing for the OC job in Baltimore, that Martin might not be long for uh, the Ravens if a, a new OC comes in, wants to bring his own guy. So go play with my brother. Go be uh, the co-OC and maybe quarterback's coach at Michigan. Like it if I am Jim Harbaugh. Plus, T. Martin brings a ton, folks, a ton of recruiting experience and recruiting success. He's recruited five stars all over the country, USC, Tennessee, and others. If Michigan can land T. Martin, wide receiver coach for the Baltimore Ravens, I think that is an A-plus hire for Jim Harbaugh. Right, I want to remind you guys one more time, tomorrow, 5 o'clock Eastern, Wednesday. You might be watching this Wednesday. Okay, you didn't catch us on Tuesday night. 5 o'clock Eastern, we will be live here on YouTube. So set yourself a reminder. And I want to give some shout-outs to the folks that have helped make these live shows happen. These are Super Chat Leaderboard. People since uh, mid to late November, right before the Ohio State game, have uh, contributed to the show through Super Chats. John Blaze. He is the man, $770, Wolverine, Alaska. Thank you so much. And your daughter, uh, uh, Leanne, uh, $340. Blue Wolverine, 180 Cool Moti, 137 Shane Johnson, 74 bucks. Cody Montfort, 71 Rick Harford, 65 Dan Ferrer, 50 John Crandall, 50 And Josiah uh, Keitner is rolling up with, uh, or Keitner, I'm sorry, with a $30 bag as well. So thanks so much to those 10 folks. Our Super Chat leaderboard, if you want to have a sticker on the helmet and uh, be part of our end of show credits. So we're going to do once a week in the off season end show credits. The people who made it possible, $10 Super Chat gets you on the end show credits between now and next Wednesday. So do not miss out. Join tomorrow and toss us a $10 Super Chat. Ann Arbor? How about Ann Harbor? Uh, and that's for, of course, Nicholas Harbor. Probably the biggest recruit left out there on the board right now. There were some rumors that, oh gosh, she was in Colorado. He even put it on his Instagram story. And people were freaking out. Is Deion Sanders going to flip Nicholas Harbor last minute to come to Colorado? Not so fast, my friend. His dad debunked the rumors. I'm not sure why that Harbor put it out there. Maybe he was just trying to mess with people, which he clearly did. Uh, his dad said, nope, he's in school right now. Okay, maybe that's the case. Maybe his dad's just covering for him. I'm not sure. But tonight's the night for Michigan. Jim Harbaugh, Ron Bellamy, and, of course, Sharon Moore. So maybe Michigan's leaning a little more towards uh, Harbor on the offensive side of the ball, tight end, wide receiver. Uh, he's one of the great athletes in all of high school football or high school anything, right? He's a big-time track athlete as well. Super fast, uh, was making plays on both sides of the ball when he was uh, at the U.S. Army All-American game. So Michigan needs to make a big impression tonight. So we should know more about this by tomorrow's live show. But keep an eye out for Oregon. He is taking his last and final uh, visit, his official visit to Oregon this weekend before next Wednesday signing day. So although Harbaugh gets in home tonight, visiting with the parents, visiting with mom, Oregon gets the last uh, you know, effort in person. They might just, you know, hey, let's see your suitcase. Well, let's replace your clothes with a million dollars in cash. Don't uh, be surprised if that's what happens with Oregon and Nicholas Harbor. He is uh, visiting there this weekend, but I'll have more for this story for you guys tomorrow on our live show. I'll ask you guys the question. What's your optimism level? Uh, what are you thinking? Will Nicholas Harbor pick Michigan um, top 15 recruit, number one athlete, just an absolute athletic freak? Give me a Y for yes or an N for no down in the comments. If you guys didn't see the show last week, I told you, look, Monday starts winter conditioning. Diamond Edwards is getting surgery. He's going to miss four to six weeks. Um, but now Michigan's players are in, in the gym, right? They're doing wind sprints. They're working out 5 a.m., 6 a.m. some days. It's brutal. I remember when I was in college, I, I, you know, my dorm was next to some football players. Those guys were up crazy early. And with the start of winter conditioning also starts hyperbole season. It starts yesterday, and it's going to last all the way through kickoff in early September in the big house. And uh, you guys may have seen these in the past. Uh, this is about three or four years ago. I did my top 10 cliches around Michigan football. But it's not there yet. But if you guys consume content around Michigan football from newspapers, websites, podcasts, etc., get ready for the blog boys who have key, you know, kind of coined the competition, the blog boys, to start whipping these bad boys out nonstop going forward for the next five, six months. Toss them up there on screen. Producer Jack, a.k.a. Young Harbaugh, my top off-season cliches that I refuse to use ever. 
but you guys are going to hear from everybody else over the next six months. Best shape of life. Oh, my gosh. Mozzie Smith is in the best shape of his life. Um, uh, I don't know. Zach Zinter is in the best shape of his life. Blake Corum, 2% body fat, best shape of his life. How about the team chemistry? Oh, they just locked arms after that loss to TCU. They're not letting it happen again. This team chemistry, this is the closest Michigan football team we've ever seen. Okay, cool. Ooh, how about the position coach? Oh, this wide receiver coach, Ryan Bellamy, he loves wide receiver. Whatever. Oh, Cornelius Johnson, going to take it to the next level. He's ready to, to make the next jump in the NFL. Position coaches, when they talk to the media, they just love their unit. They love the players in their unit. They're about to have a record year. Uh, how about unknown player tearing it up? We've seen him uh, throughout the years. I mean, like Jake McCleary and all these different wide receivers. Harbaugh seems to hype up that never even have a catch. Um, we've seen it plenty of times in the past. Three-star player. No one's ever really heard of. Hasn't made any impact in two, three seasons. All of a sudden, he's tearing it up. He's about to have a huge season. And as usual, it rarely ever pans out that way. Maybe David Ajabo a couple years ago was the only one that really uh, lived up to the unknown player tearing it up hype. And as we can expect, the off-season workout videos going viral. I feel like sometimes fans on the internet, they think, oh my gosh, these guys are lifting weights? We're going to win every single game. I love it when it's like someone's in the gym shooting like three-pointers, something like that, like LeBron shooting threes. Oh man, LeBron's in the mission. He's in the gym. He's getting it done. Well, it's kind of their job as athletes to be working out in the off-season uh, or just anytime. So I'm not sure why those go so viral. But there it is. Keep an eye out for those off-season cliches over the next six months, especially with winter conditioning getting started yesterday. Guys, if you made it to the end of today's video that makes you a real one, that makes you part of the squad, makes you an m -er, and help us out if you are. Uh, you've watched the video enough to... Uh, to make it part of your day. So uh, help us out by getting this video in front of more Michigan football fans by giving it a like. It really helps out the YouTube algorithm with kind of saying like, hey, I give this video my stamp of approval. So if you made it this far, give the video a like and make sure you join us tomorrow, 5 o'clock Eastern for the Michigan Football Report live show. And until I see you guys then, go blue.